Good afternoon, Rich Nass with Open Systems Media. I'm here with Maher Mata. Uh, he is the president of Infineon Americas. Um, we are at your October Tech event. Why do you have an October Tech event? This is, I mean, I've been walking around. Is, this has to cost you a lot of money. Why are you doing this? Yeah, it, it started about seven, eight years ago when we realized that as a company, we had to do a little bit more as it comes to putting out our brand and our innovation. But also we wanted a venue where we can highlight our partners and how we're collaborating with them. Because for sure, from a collaboration point of view, Infineon very much views that as a key component of innovation and ultimately doing business. So hopefully what you'll see today is uh, not just Infineon highlighting certain devices or areas we want to highlight, but also how partners are using them and what they're proud of. Okay. You, uh, in your opening remarks this morning, you talked about the breadth of the portfolio and how that's a, uh, a good thing and a bad thing. I um, hate to focus on the bad thing, but you guys do so much. How do you inform people of all the things that you're in? There was, there was talk about a microphone this morning and I heard about the various products groups microphone doesn't really fit any of those groups in th the way that I look at it. So how do you inform people on all the things that you guys are doing? And there's always more things being added. Yeah, uh, I mean, since you brought up the microphone, the microphone is part of our sensors portfolio, so it, it uh, tends to fit nicely in IoT and, and in mobile devices and uh, pretty much anything that needs uh, uh, audio. But then why do we have such a large portfolio? Because we really want to look at the system solution. So. Part of our acquisition strategy over the last uh, few years, first with IR, then with uh, Cyprus about three, four years ago, and uh, just yesterday with GAN Systems closing, really is to build out a portfolio where we can be a one-stop shop for our customers. Uh, we see the world evolving to a fairly complicated where you cannot just be selling components and products by themselves. You have to approach it from a system point of view. Um, you mentioned, mm, okay, is that a dual-edged sword? It can be, uh, particularly in some areas where, you know, you, again, you highlighted the microphone. You know, we're a leader in microphones. We ship hundreds of millions of these things. I would wager to bet you carry one in your phone, depending on what brand you carry. And, uh, and, and in some cases, we are still the best kept secret of semiconductors. So a little bit back to why we have this event, we, we could be doing better to get the word out, and that's what we're trying to do. Okay, very good. One of the big topics here is sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I'm very skeptical. I'm not cynical, I'm skeptical. And wh when sustainability came up a couple years ago, it seemed like it was very much lip service. Um, buy our products because we're doing our best to reduce our carbon footprint. And um, there didn't seem to be any more than that. What I've been learning, I learned a lot today, um, how that can actually be very profitable. And I don't want to go back to being cynical and say that's the reason why you're doing it, because I know that you guys want to be a good citizen. But I isn't it true that there's actually a lot of money to be made by being a sustainable company? Be, you know, decarbonization and digitization, which is the banner we put this uh, topic, is very much uh, a good business thing as well, absolutely. Um, on one side, you know, those of us who have children or grandchildren, you do sometimes reflect and say, okay, can the world really sustain 70% of the cars going to EV? Or can it really sustain multiple AI models with, you know, the next chat XYZ number, taking, you know, huge amounts of power to train? You can't stop that train. So part of it is, you know what, what can, how can we make a difference? So when you go home and you look at your children, how do you feel? But to your point, it's more than that. There, it is also good business because it's good business for the people who are optimizing their data centers, if you want to take that example, because their cost of ownership to run that data center is lower. So if I can help the environment and reduce my operating costs because I don't need air conditioning or I use less energy, then why not? For us, we have the saying that without digitization, you can't have decarbonization. And guess what? Yes, digitization requires chips. You need more ICs to be able to do this. So if you want to measure 
uh, whether you should have air conditioning in this room, you probably need a sensor to see, is there somebody in here? So yes, in theory, you could say, well, now you're selling a, a chip. But you know what? We just saved the power uh, uh, the, uh, the, for the light and the air conditioning in this room. So the building owner is happy because even if he doesn't view it as I saved you know, the planet, he's going to view it as I reduced my cost. And for him, he would say it's worth putting that sensor in. So it's both. We, it can be good business. Okay. Uh, here's a curveball because I love throwing you curveballs, and I know they like to prep you before I get here, and I ask you questions that you're not prepped for. Um, I heard about uh, smartifying manufacturing. Mm -hmm. What the heck is that? I, I don't know in which context you use that, but to me being smart manufacturing is, I mean, today you heard some examples. Yeah, I just heard it this morning. So yeah. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was an Infinian term, or an okay. Infinian speaker yeah. who said it. Yeah, so uh, manufacturing, uh, like we, we, you saw the John Deere example where we say there are industries that have been very traditional. And by adding back to digitization sensors and compute, you can definitely smartify, quote unquote, those applications, be it industrial, be it agriculture. So that's what that term means, is kind of back to the digitization piece. We can be more efficient with people's times about how they do it by adding certain sensors, automating certain loads, using AI again in certain applications. So I think that's where that context came from. Okay, so we talked about what the themes are here at this event. What's the theme for next year? Boy, it's the day's not over and I'm being asked <laughs> about next year. Uh, I mean, you know what? I do think digitization, decarbonization will be a long-term arc. This is not a, um, a short-term thing. I, I do think that the trends we're seeing on energy and energy storage and grid resilience and EV will be here next year as well. So I do not expect next year to be a, okay, we have a new brand campaign now and out with the old, in with the new. We do think this is a actually a, at least a generational challenge, if not a multi-generational challenge. So I would be surprised if you see something totally different. We may change up the, you know, the different uh, types of products we show or the different partners, but the theme should be consistent. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you today. Same here.